If all the victims were slashed to death. With a knife? No, it sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. The giant scissors once again search for prey. The trail of terror stretches across Europe, from Norway to England. Here it is, the Barrow's Mansion. We have to go there and look around, or we'll never solve the mystery of scissor man. Got to be joking. It's way too dangerous. As long as he's alive, we're not safe anywhere. One after another, <gasps> the horrifying murders continue. <gasps> we'll make it through this game of murder alive. Tower. No, I don't think that was an emulator issue. I'm fairly certain the game's intro is that desynced normally. This is Clock Tower for the Sony PlayStation. While the first game didn't see release overseas, this one did, which is why it's referred to as Clock Tower even though it's the second game. Now, this is actually the only game in the series that's a direct sequel, as you might have noticed. We're going to be playing as Jennifer Simpson again, and of course, Scissor Man's back. Now, this game's reception was a bit mixed. When it was released, it, it got decent scores. Nothing amazing, but it was, it was alright. Uh, these days, it's kind of back and forth. I mean, I don't think anyone will say this game's better than First Fear. I mean, it's a pretty good game, I'd say, but overall, people... There are certain sections that people don't like, and, well, this game kind of suffers from Resident Evil quality voice acting. It's really not good. But I myself do like it, while it, it might not... The thing is, it hasn't really aged as well as First Fear. I mean, it's a PlayStation 1 game, a lot of them didn't really age that well. And, of course... Super Nintendo games kind of did, because they reached the peak with 2D games. But anyway, enough of that, we're actually going to be playing soon. What on earth are you doing, Professor? I was aiming for Mode 7, but I went way past that, I guess. He's not ready to remember the murders yet. Helen. The clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. See what I mean? I must know the truth of what happened. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. All right. But remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yes, Professor. What a pleasant man. And guess what? We get to play as him. Oh boy, I so want to play as Professor Barton. Ah yes, this bed makes me think of murders. Wait, ten victims? Hold up a sec, there were only four in Clock Tower First Fear. Yeah, the game does actually say there are ten victims, so I guess Mary might have taken a few extra kids before Jennifer and the rest? Which begs the question how she managed to get away with something that like that maybe twice, possibly more, depending on how many she got each time, I don't know. Oh, and here's a hint. It's just there. You only have to get this once, and when you save, it's permanent and you can't pick it up again. Oh, ammonia isn't that great. Well, not too interested in that. How about this giant pair of scissors? Uh... Okay, we're done with that. Yeah, that was weird. Was that something that Barton was thinking? Was he just imagining that giant pair of scissors and red lights and then just st stop all of a sudden? I, I hope not. He's got a weird train of thought if that's the case. Lately, I have been doing my job and it has involved me doing stuff. And for some reason, the staff is still here during working hours. How odd. Well, at least I don't have to yell at them. 
Maybe they won't even go home for once. God, if I could just keep people working all the time, that would be great. So yes, while you probably can't really see the model, and the model itself really isn't that good, that is actually the very same demon idol from the first game, so... It's canon! Suck it, Scepter! You suck anyway, and the idol is the canon one. Well, I mean, I guess the idol would... could still exist, even if he's the Scepter, but whatever! It's only been a year. Hello, I am Professor Barton. What is empathy? I do not understand human emotions. How, how do they work? Let me just look at this person's computer, no problem. Look at this sprite right here completely flat. It's kind of weird. How does that even work? Uh, I hate to agree with Professor Barton, but yeah, that is kind of not really the best thing to buy. Oh, hey, you know, here's a murderer. He killed people like a year ago. Let's glorify him. Uh, okay, the pieces of paper tell you that, or what? Also, another thing you might have noticed, but for some reason this game's cursor really likes placing itself over people's groins. It's kind of weird. Stop making me click on this man's crotch. I don't want to. Yeah, it's so dumb that these people are, uh, wait, uh, what? Yes, this killer who didn't exist... Everyone was killed by an idea, and Danny, you are kind of weirding me out. Just going to put you on my suspicious list, as well as my possible red herrings list. Alright, well, I suppose in my... Oh, hey, look, I don't like you in the slightest. So, this is actually an important thing right here. This is Harris. He actually determines what character you'll play as. If you don't talk to him, or talk to him once, you'll play as Helen. If you talk to him more than once, he'll actually mention Jennifer, and that's who you're going to be playing as for the rest of the game. Well, most of the rest, anyway. So yes, I'm going to imagine that most people played as Jennifer first, just because you can't actually leave the office without talking to everyone, like, twice, so... The player will probably think, oh hey, I must need to talk to this guy a bunch of times, right? And then he will mention Jennifer, and then they'll play as Jennifer, which makes sense. I mean, you'd probably want to play as the main character from the previous game first. Anyway, let's go see that newspaper reporter. Also, if you try to go to the third floor, Professor Barton will be like, I'm not going to waste my time up there! I'm Professor Barton. What are human emotions? I don't understand how to have fun. Colonel? Hello, I am the most unpleasant being alive. Yep, still unpleasant. Uh, okay, you're gonna... T okay, are you really trying to make me click on this man's butt? Are you really trying to make me do that game? Don't want to click on his butt. Hello, I am not getting the answers I want, so I'm going to say she lacks credibility. Oh, well, you know, she's just the subject of this whole mess. Only survivor, etc., etc. I don't get it. Why doesn't she want to talk about that time she was nearly killed? And stop making me touch this man's butt! who does not exist at all. He was just imaginary. He is just a concept. I 
I need to clarify everything. Damn, even by Barton's standards, that was a sick burn. Ha 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 ha, my job is tactless and demands my soul. Uh, okay, so he does exist. So there was a scissor man, you're saying, even though he doesn't exist. Yeah, so basically that's the reason he keeps saying he doesn't exist. What he's trying to say is uh, he's not actually immortal, but he instead he just keeps saying, well, scissor man doesn't actually exist. Yeah, this isn't really a very well-written game. Bar Barton's kind of confusing like that, because that's... Thank goodness they clarify that right there, because otherwise it just seemed kind of crazy. Oh yeah, you know, there was a guy with a giant pair of scissors, but he wasn't a scissor man. I mean, really, that's just ridiculous. Oh wait, what? Wait, maybe Anne did survive... Anne was not a ten-year-old boy. Okay, what's this even about? There was definitely not a ten-year-old boy in that game. Well, okay, there was Scissor Man, but he kind of got crushed to death, so he's dead. Well, I guess we might as well check this out. Oh, right. Hello, I am Barton. I must be exact in everything I do. I cannot even waste footsteps or I will explode. Time to go be unpleasant to everyone in the room, which is hopefully a lot of people. I'm Professor Button, and I hope nobody's standing up. And again, sitting does make them lazy. Maybe I should remove all the chairs in the room. Really make them work harder. How did he... Weren't we in front of the front entrance? How did he get in? Alright, let's check this statue. Might as well, right? Because it is quite the crucial bit of information, apparently. Fit into addition to everything. This idol did not actually exist. It is impossible for something like this to exist. How could it possibly be a key to... A trapdoor that leads to a cave underneath a mansion. That is absolutely ridiculous. I am Barton. Ah, yes. Good old Rick from the suburbs. You know, Rick. So this is actually an important decision right here. If you say no, then he'll give it to a man named Sullivan. Now that may be solved, however, if you choose yes, then something different will indeed happen. Hello Rick, I know I just said out loud that I would show this thing to you, but now I'm going to formally ask that I give you the statue. No, the other statue. You know, the one that doesn't have anything to do with anything. So yes, this is actually a very important decision, but we're not going to be doing anything about that just yet. It's going to be in a little while that we'll actually have to uh, make use of what we just said, but do keep your decision in mind no matter what it is. There's no wrong answer just yet. So let's see who this survivor is. I'm just going to stand here and not talk to people. Hello, person's arm. How is it going? Also, this line of dialogue really bothers me. No, I call him Edward because not having a name to go by makes things very... difficult. Seriously, this this script is just so... I don't know if it's poorly written or poorly translated, but it's just so stiff and dry. Everyone sounds like robots. I gave him a name because human beings require a name in order to differentiate themselves from one another. Beep boop.
You couldn't have just said, I gave him a name myself and left it at that. No, you have to clarify everything. Okay, make sure to tell me everything I want to hear, or I will discredit you completely. Alright, and on with the old day. Now we're playing as Helen. Thank God. Oof, well, that sucks. Wow, that double sucks. You know, maybe you should just use someone else's computer. I mean, no one else is using these things. Look, they're all empty. This is like, what, supposed to be the middle of the day and nobody's working? Oh man, Burton's gonna kill a whole lot of people. Why are you not working? You should be working. What are you doing? Frolicking in that meadow. Stop being happy. I think I will go out for a while. Human beings must have some sort of joy in their life, otherwise they will cease to function. Beep boop. Alright, well, uh, might as well visit Helen. See how that computer's going. I will go see Helen. Beep boop. In a bolding. Hey, what do you know? She said, what's up? It wasn't extremely formal. I just came for a visit because I have nothing to do, and I wanted to see how you were faring. Beep boop. I'm, go I'm going to be a bit late tonight. My computer exploded, and also I have work due tomorrow. And that's why I probably shouldn't procrastinate. Ugh. That's probably going to be the worst thing to happen to you today, so look on the bright side. It can't possibly get any worse, right? Alright, well, we might as well head out now. So let's see this library here. After all, I believe that was mentioned by Barton Wright. And indeed, this right here is Mr. Sullivan. Now, most people know Helen, uh, this right here, is actually Helen's mentor, apparently. I don't think that's ever mentioned in-game, but yeah, they know each other. Also, most people know Jennifer as well, even though she's only been here a year, so... Looks like everyone's pretty friendly. Or at least everyone in these little dots that we can travel to. What about this place? Yeah, that's probably a terrible idea. Let's go somewhere more pleasant, like a hotel. Yeah, let's check this out. I wonder what kind of boy he is, this person that apparently survived the murders with me. Must have been found, like, later than she was, but where did he hide? I'm pretty sure I checked every corner. Were you under that zombie man, Edward? Where were you hiding? I have your face stored in my memory bank so that I am able to recognize you easily. So, she's been a teacher for like a year? And she's already been entrusted with this kid who was almost murdered. So they didn't give this job to someone who had tenure, or what? And we interrupt this conversation again for absolutely no reason. Yes, I've heard of this dumb amnesia plot. Even though I didn't get amnesia from this. And she's only like five years older than he is. In the hotel? But... They don't even know each other. Are they just going to talk about the murder? Hey, there was this kid with a giant pair of scissors. Did he try to kill you too? Good times. Good times. All right, well, bye, kid. Well, that's done and over with. Thank God we don't have to talk to him anymore. And neither Helen nor Jennifer want to go there. There is one last location that Jennifer doesn't have to go through. Go to, rather. And here we meet the best character in the game. 
Assistant Inspector Gotts, the person in charge of the Clock Tower case, is here and right in front of me. I do not know why I'm stating this out loud. Beep boop. So Gotts is probably the closest character to Helen next to Jennifer. For some reason or another, he has a nickname for her, which is Teach. I don't know why, but he does. Also, for some reason, Gotts is really adamant about reminding people that he's the assistant inspector rather than the chief inspector. Good guy, that Gotts. He prefers being correct over making himself look better. However, he is in charge at the moment, as the unnamed chief inspector was hospitalized for... Uh, some unknown reason. But whatever the reason, he is currently in charge of this case. Well, that was a nice day on the town, but that seems to be all we can do for now. Guess we may as well head home. Is it Pikachu? Wait, no, it was coughing. Oh, no, it's you. What are, what are you doing in Jennifer's house? And why do I still have to click your butt? Ah, yes, the long time of a year. It's mainly due to Barton, really. He just keeps calling everyone liars. Uh, no? It, I don't want to touch this man's butt after he said that. Uh, dude, she's underaged. Just, just say interview. Just say interview. Say interview. You're almost double her age. No! God damn it, Nolan. Seriously. Fifteen. You're 26. Jennifer, it shouldn't really matter if you have a crush. You've met this guy a total of 0.5 times. And you're underaged. Getting late is... Probably the worst thing to tell yourself when you've got an important paper due. Ah, hello, suspiciously suspicious guy. That is a big help because without it, I could not properly create this dissertation in order to receive a passing grade. Beep boop. Oh, no need to lock up the university. Somebody will vandalize the place, but whatever.